Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. We made it to almost the end of the week. Um, how's everybody doing? I just want to introduce my friend, Lakeisha Williams. She's a member of my wise council and one of the founding members of my VA World brand. So how are you this morning, Lakeisha? I am well. I am well. How about yourself? I am making it this morning. I had a hard night. I woke up like three separate times. But anyways, wow. um, I wanted to come on this morning with Lakeisha, of course, because Lakeisha was one of the first people I met when I started my entrepreneurship journey. And um, today I went to get dipped because the kid didn't buy it. Like I told him, but it's in the store. And then I decided to get coffee. And yes, I have a Keurig, but I tried to stop drinking coffee. So I haven't bought none of coffee. Um, and I was in the I was in the coffee area of Wawa and this dude was literally making a mess. And so the girl was coming out to stop the coffee supplies. And she said, are you going to clean it up? And he said, no, that's your job. And she came back with this. My job description said, I am supposed to stop, not clean up behind people. Loved it. So, Akisha, what is your thought on it? Because mine is like super awesome. Well, if her job description didn't say that, then that ain't something she's supposed to be doing. That's not a responsibility. It's not a duty of hers. So she was right. Very much so right. So in corporate, we all have a job description, or we should, because that is how you set boundaries and say, hmm, that might have to wait because that's not my immediate duty. But as an entrepreneur, it is so important for us to make sure that we do not allow scope creep and we set our boundaries. I know I have had problems with this, but I'm growing into my own. Um, and so I put the scope of work in my contract. I also say in my contract, um, if you require things that are not in the scope, it is up to me to accept them. If it's a one-off and your project will be amended if it's going to be a regular thing, which would mean it's a different price. Mm -hmm. um, I also have them initial beside those things that they were ready, they acknowledge it. And then also too, it's included in my welcome package, which is separate for them to see it and see it and know it. What are your thoughts, Lakeisha? I think you covered all of the bases. You did the right thing, having it in all of the places, several reminders about it having them to be intentional uh, about reading it because they got an initial next to it. Even though we know sometimes people don't read it, but I think you did a good job by putting it in several different places. Mm -hmm. My question for you is, well, how do you handle it though if it still happens? Because we know people don't read. They, they you know, speed through things, they skim it. Yes. And just some of the most important pertinent parts of our contracts and stuff. So yes. how do you handle it if it does happen? Um, so I've had this instance. And so um, one thing was she wanted me to be creative. Um, and I always let everyone know, I do not do social media for other people because it burns out my own creativity. But, you know, she pressed it. And so, you know, I tried it. And then it was burning me out. And so I sent her an email to reiterate the section of my contract um, and to let her know that, you know, this is a boundary for me. And um, I, I just chose not to accept that. Um, you are a business owner. So as a business owner, you set your boundaries. And so I had to learn to be intentional about that. You know, if you're not going to pay your invoice on time, you know, I might let you slide a couple of times. No, I might let you slide one time. But I recently had to be intentional about how I handle that. Um, one time I did send an email and say, you know, pursuant to this part of the contract, you know, your work is supposed to stop the day after your missed payment and your contract is going to end seven days after your missed payment. Um, and you missed your payment on these instances. And the feedback I got was um, that it was too corporate um, and she didn't appreciate it because she thought we were cool. And, and again, I'm always learning. I have always been able to be cool with anyone in a position where I have to work under them. 
but as a business owner, I'm working with you. And I'm a business owner the same way you're a business owner. And so I need to be cognizant of, I have to have those boundaries in place because my business can't run if my bills are late and my bills can't be late because you didn't pay yours. So I had to learn to um, really stand up and say, you know, that's not something that I'm going to accept. So, you know, I'm working on how do I, how do I convey that? Because I mean, I do feel like I am very connected with my um, clients. I mean, I literally say in everything I do that I am a partner with them in building their business. So I am working on how to um, convey that. How would you convey it? Because I mean, I'm from corporate, so corporate is what I got. Well, the thing about it is, is that, and I think this is the part that a lot of entrepreneurs miss, is that the what we call corporate America, a corporate job, it's nothing but a small business that grew. Mm -hmm. It's nothing but a small business that grew. And it grew because it put those type of boundaries in place to prevent them from, you know, overdoing it, from over delivering and being underpaid. Mm -hmm. Because if you really think about it, a lot of the jobs, especially like if you are in service-based jobs, mm -hmm. like what we are, we are service-based. If you are in a service-based job, you got to think about how it was when they piled on a ton of work, but they didn't increase your pay. Mm -hmm. Like that, all of that stuff is transferable. Yes. It's not just the stuff that you learn. It's the experiences that you go through at the jobs where people are going home and having to take their computers home and finish work into the wee hours of the night and not being able to spend time with their families and stuff like that. That's the reason why a lot of us, especially after COVID, a lot of people actually turned to entrepreneurship because they saw how much they had been missing with their families. And they was like, man, you know, I really like being able to spend time with my family. You know, they may get, they going off to school, the kids going off to school, husband may be going to his job or whatever, but they realized how much they were missing because they were being overworked at their jobs. Mm -hmm. So they got the right to control that. And I'm pretty sure you feel, you felt that in working. I don't. working <laughs> but that's me. You know, I love my job and I love the team that I work with. Um, and I do spend a lot of time with my family, but small doses. <laughs> Anybody who knows me knows that. Well, in that case, then you figured out what the balance was right. and, and balance. worked it toward also worked it towards your personality. You know, your personality can't take mm -hmm. family every day, all day long. So you balance it out. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, that was one of the things for me when I was working, still working a job and building my business was I missed out on a lot of family stuff because invoices were not being paid people were pulling scope creep on me plus I had to work so I was stuck in that schedule and I was like you know what this that ain't for me let me go on and put my head down get to work and go 100% entrepreneurship mm -hmm. so when I want to go home I can go home that's another important fact is that you chose the 100% whereas I've always known that I love my job and it was never going to be 100% and I go back and forth with that, but for the most part, I love my job. So I have it 100% and that is okay. It is, it is specific yeah, to what you perfect. want. You don't that's have to start a business and all of a sudden in two years, you have to be full-time. It is what you want because it's, it's what you want. You go full-time when you want to go full-time. But at the same time, though, for me, it wasn't really so much, you know, that I didn't like my job. I actually enjoyed the jobs that I did. I wouldn't have applied for them if I didn't enjoy the jobs that I did. Although there was one that I applied for that I was kind of like, mm -hmm. but it turned out to be one of the most fun jobs I've ever worked. And that was when I worked at KFC. Mm -hmm. And I had the opportunity to grow there. Mm -hmm. I went in because at the particular time, you know, it was shortly after my husband had a stroke. And we needed money coming in so we could pay our mortgage. So um, I ended up getting a job at KFC. I went in applying just to be a crew member. And he asked me in my interview, did I want to be a shift leader? I said, sure, I'll take it. It's more money, number one. <laughs> I can do more. And number two, it, it's putting me in a position where I'm not just, you know, I'm not at the bottom of the totem pole. Right. 
And he was like, from what I'm seeing on your resume, from how you are talking in this interview, he said, I can see you actually moving up the chain here fairly quickly. And I was like, I don't know if I really want to at the time. Because I was still shying away from management roles, even though I had been offered a management. Never I mean, want to be I a manager. To go for a management role at my previous job. Never. <laughs> yeah. So I'm that type of person where I'm go like if we doing something, I'm gonna take the the bull by the horns and I'm gonna try. You know, if nobody else is spearheading it, I'll be that one person that get up there and keep it all organized and all of that. So he saw that in me. Um and gave me the position. Well, it ended up turning into not too long. Within a year, I moved from applying to be a member of the team to being the first assistant. Mm -hmm. And it was what? It's two other positions in between that. The shift leader, the second assistant, and then I got the first assistant. And that was all within a year. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, cool. Maybe this is the thing for me. And he taught me so much. A lot of the stuff that he taught me to run that store, mm -hmm. I use it now. Mm -hmm. Like I had to learn how to command a team. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And get everybody on board with me, even if they didn't like me. Because I ain't going to lie to you. They hated me when I first got there. <laughs> they hated me. The hate can be real when when you have to hold people accountable and even though y'all are cool, they expect the kickbacks and all those things. So yeah, definitely understand that. I mean, coming into my career, my first boss was a vice president of a department at, in mortgage um, at a bank. And she literally said, you are here to get things done, to make things easier for me and to make sure this department runs when, when I'm busy. Um, you're not here to be friends. And I've had a lot of people say, well, you're not nice at work or you never smile at work. Work is work. And I realized that I'm here to do a job. I'm getting paid to do a job. Friendship is a whole other thing. If I'm on break, if I ain't got a lot of work right this minute, or if we meet up afterwards, oh, that's cool. But when I'm working, my job is to get things done. And that's the way it is. And I mean, even in my business, my clients will be joking or something and I will be straight faced and they were like, well, I don't know how to take you. And I'm working on that because I don't have to be that way because it is my business and I can change that. But I think, you know, 28 years of get it done is is in the way of the, oh, yeah, but smile the whole meeting. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But you know, fine. personality shines. It, it's like you said, it's hard even for me. I've been doing this full time without a job for four mm -hmm. years. Yeah, four mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's like, you know, when I first started, I was straight faced, all of that. But like you said, I've now grown into it to where I can actually be cool with my clients. Yeah. Like I'm finally relaxing mm -hmm. and the same way me and you talk, I can relax and talk to them the same way and the work still get done. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's another thing about being a business owner. We do not have to be so straight laced. Um, and we can take cues from the client, you know, mm -hmm. definitely take cues from the client. My clients are so chill that, you know, and they're understanding, you know, when I'm having an issue, you know, they're, they're completely giving me grace. I just went on a TV show and I was gone for a week and no issues, no problems with it. So, I mean, it's, it's um, just because you have that get it done attitude. Like they know that if I give Nikki or something, it's going to get done. They can trust you. Right. They handle you literally. And I don't know if a lot of people really understand this. People like this that work on the back end of a business, whether it's being the virtual assistant mm -hmm. or whether it's being a copywriter or, you know, a web developer or something like that. We know what we're doing. We're going to get the work done, but we also know how to be regular people at the same time. Right. It's, yeah. it's not so much. And you handing us, you basically handing over the keys to your baby. Right. And that's another thing, you know, I have personally dealt with the, um, issue of I want you to delegate to me but I can't delegate so that's like super important um, to find a way for you to be able to get over the challenges I mean I've had challenges with trust and that's why I don't delegate 
And I don't necessarily always need help. So I had to learn to realize that I may not need the help, but people are willing to help me and I should take advantage of that or not take advantage of that. I should take them up on that if they offer instead of always saying, no, I got it. No, I got it. No, I got it. So definitely. And that's one of the things that we have to remember. We tell our clients, you know, that there's a list of things that only they can do. And there's a list of things that they can do it, but is it really worth their time and effort to do it with what all they have to juggle as a business owner? You know, and we forget to take our own advice sometimes. Yeah. And I know with my business, I try to customize what they need based on our first conversation. Um, And so like I've had a client who only wanted calendar management and Mm -hmm. in two years, um, we, we've changed our contract four times. So, I mean, the price kept going up because she liked the service and she literally liked the fact that she could trust me for one, the work will be good and that I could literally do it and free her up to do other things like grow her business. So um, I think that, you know, that aspect for me is a very good selling point um, because most people do not value um, bringing on an administrative team member because they're like, oh, I can get it done after work. And, and also to pricing, you know, I have been an administrative professional for 28 years. So no, I don't charge $25. And that's a thing. Um, so the whole conversation. I've been, this, I've been doing this for 10 years now and I don't charge $25 an hour. Right. Now, but you have a different specialty. I mean, your project management, all that stuff, workflow systems, those things do require an expertise that is going to command more money. Um, but then, see, the thing about it is, those people still clump me into the virtual assistant category because that's where I started from. And right. I'm, but I, I mean, I think we should also it. say that, you know, a virtual assistant is a industry um, or a moniker. It is not what you do. Um, I literally have started calling myself an administrative virtual consultant. Um, I'm not necessarily a VA because I can do way more than that. I choose not to. You know, I can build a website. I know how to run a project. I know how to do lots of things. I can run a community. You know, I can do lots of things and I choose to specialize in one. And if we get comfortable and you feel like it's something that you want to ask me to do, we can discuss it as long as it doesn't go against any boundaries I have. Um, So I definitely think a job description is great in both your professional and entrepreneurship journey. Um, I know I've had conversations with people and they're like, I don't know what I can say no to because I don't have a job description. And I feel sad because I have a job description and I definitely stick to it. That's not mine. That part. That part. Nope. That part, that part. <laughs> and, you know, I'll even call it out. You know, my job description has in there that I am supposed to find efficiencies and I'm good at that. You know, I can take a process. Look at it and be like, nope, we can automate this. Nope, you don't need that. This person's not going to know how to do this. And that's, that's efficient. Yeah, but that's a lot of people take yeah. take um cause with me finding efficiencies. Well, I don't know why you was in my stuff or why we got to do it different. I've been doing it like this for, you know, but in my job, and I will call that out, my job description says that I'm always supposed to be looking for efficiencies. So would you please take this advice and keep it moving? Right. Well, I I think for some people, it may be your delivery, depending on exactly how you deliver it. Because I know I know it ain't how you just said it here on the video, um, you know, while we talking. I know it's a more professional approach to it. You're not just saying, well, you need to change this because I think it'll be more efficient. You're really breaking it down, giving them the numbers behind it, giving them the basically the science, because it's a science to to find in, you know, the inefficiency is it worth the time is it going to work out for everyone all those things and i mean like down to their bottom line like and i know with me in my job i literally sent my job description you know when i was getting that pushback i sent my job description this is what i'm required to do so i need you to assist me or we need to have a conversation um but in my business i try to make sure that everything is in the scope of work Um, once a year, we rediscuss the scope of work. And also too, I know with me, I, I know take milestones. And so at the end of the year, my client gets a video of all the things we've done. 
and my thanks for trusting me, all of that, so she can see going into a new year the mm -hmm. benefit of keeping me on and possibly the benefit of increasing services. So it's all about how you customize what you want to do because it right. is your business. It's and, your and business. You're doing a your great business. job at showing your value. I try. Because, yeah. like, I'm serious. A lot of people be like, you try $65,000 Yes, I do. A lot well, of you, people be like, you, what you do it. I get? We do all of this hard work on the front end to show our value in order to land the clients. But you got to do that same thing. Like like the old song go, the saying go about a, a man and a woman. The same thing you did to get is the same thing you got to do to keep it. It applies to these relationships as well. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, you, do the same thing. Yeah, you, you definitely don't, don't want to be siloed and just head down working. You want yeah. to pay attention, you know, because different things are happening, especially when they're scaling. So, I mean, you know, I found this software. Can we use this or can we investigate? You know, one of my clients was um, asking me to add a field on a Google form so that she could create a CRM. And I'm like, I could do that. Well, why not a CRM? You know, so being that we were being cost efficient, I went through the Google Marketplace and I found three options. I still created this spreadsheet, you know, but I found three options to be like, let's automate this a little more. You know, so I'm always looking for efficiencies. And I think with any client, you want to make sure that you are always paying attention to, um, and if you're comfortable, say, hey, I know how to do this, or I've heard of this. You right. Because they have... may not know certain systems. Right. And be honest with them about the stuff that you don't know. Mm -hmm. Definitely <laughs> honest about what you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Let them know, hey, I don't know how to do it. However, I'm willing to give it a try if you're willing to let me yeah. give it a try. Yes. Yeah. I know a lot of people will, will say um something to me and I will literally say, I've never done it, but I can research it and I'll let you know if I can take it on or I'll let you know if I have a referral bin and I have a referral base of 700 um women that are providing virtual services. So I mean, just because it's not for you don't mean it's not for someone else and you can definitely hook up your network and they can definitely hook you up too. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know that competition thing is is not really a thing. I want everyone to win. I want exactly. all of us to be able to do the things we love. If you want to get out of your job, I want to support that. If you want to keep your job and just do it on the side, I want to support that. So, right. you know, I think that's very important as entrepreneurs that we see it's completely customizable. Right. And you said something very key there that there is no competition. Because you can always collaborate. We can only, as individuals, you know, if we don't have an agency, it's only but so much that we can do. It's only so many clients that you can actually serve yes. at one time. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm at that point now where it's, do I refer everybody out that's still coming to me because I done hit my limit? Or do I put them on a wait list to work with me? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like, which do what you about do? the what about the collaboration part? And because they are a referral, you get a, you get a consistent commission off of their monthly retainer. Oh, and that's that's the other part of it. Like for for me, for what I do now, based you know versus what I used to do, I would still be heavily involved because I'm more of the brain behind it, not doing the implementation. Mm -hmm. So it would still be me taking on a full client. Mm -hmm. like something that I'm doing with one of my clients now she has somebody come to her that needs her services mm -hmm. which are very I well I can't say similar but it's one of the pieces of the puzzle that's like right there with what I do right. and she was like I'll lead it I'll lead the project but I need you to do this piece of it so I can get to my piece so I can finish up my piece those type of things so we did exactly what you said. It, it is a kind of a referral type thing. Yeah. And because I'll be doing the, the majority of the work, the bulk of it, I'm getting a larger cut from it. Right. I've thought about, like I said, I've thought about doing that, but for what I'm already doing, mm -hmm. it will be too much of my brain still having to be involved in the process. Yes. Our cognitive abilities definitely have to be safeguarded and put at the forefront. Um, yeah. Also too, I know with me and my government certifications, I plan to use my community to support those contracts 
but also too, I have to be cognizant of who works with me. Um, everybody is not your, your cup of tea. So, you know, um, right. I prefer everyone. I can't take on everyone because um, personally me, even in my real life, I do not refer anyone unless I know their work ethic and their work product. We can be cool as we want to be, but I know you don't like going to work. I know you like to leave in. I know you like to play on Facebook while you're at work. Um, and those are things that I'm looking for when I'm looking for someone to deliver a service that I am providing. So, I mean, mm -hmm. we also have to be cognizant of the friend rule and, and all the things that go with people who want to support in a certain way, but aren't really supporting. So um, those are difficult conversations to have as well. Right, right. Yeah, you, it, it's all, I don't want to say about about balance because it's- It is, it is. About, it, it is about balance, but it there's a little bit more in there than just balancing it all too. Yeah, you yeah, know. I know with me, that is one of the, I'm at work out. I know um, with me, I'm taking a break though. <laughs> I know <laughs> that is one of my um major things in my brand. You know, I am admin proud. I love being an administrative professional, but I also love having fun. I love working with my clients and all of that. So a lot of people are like, well, why is your social media like all over the place? Um, my LinkedIn's not all over the place, and my Facebook business page is not all over the place. But my my personal Facebook and my personal um Instagram is showing everything that goes with me. You see my challenges with mental health. You see me hanging out with the friends. You see right. me being with my family. You see everything. You see me with a cup most of the time. You know, so that <laughs> transparency to me is great because it shows other people that there can be balance. No one says I have to spend eight hours here and four hours here and six hours here. It is all about mixing it in and making it work for you. Yeah, if you can, that's what you do. If you can't, then you get some get with somebody like you that can teach you how to do it. Can it be taught? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. That that's one of those lessons where you have to catch it in that moment. It's not it's not really something like I wouldn't say it's one of those things to where you put together a PowerPoint and you know you have a class and they have homework and all of that. No, it's honestly. Let me say this. It's more so accountability than it is actually teaching them something. Right. They want to achieve, they want to achieve this goal of, of achieving the balance. Mm -hmm. So they need somebody like you. And I say that, y'all, because it's the truth. This is what she does. You need somebody that's accountable. Like when we get on here and we start working, she'll ask me, what am I working on? What do I got to get done for the day? And I go through my little list of stuff that I want to get done. And sometimes I tell her without her even asking me. And throughout the day while we working, she'll see me. I may get over here and get get my head down like this. She'd be like, Lakeisha, hey, you got that so-and-so done yet? I'd be like, no, not yet. She said, put that phone down then. You said you wanted to get that done. You wanted that off your to-do list. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, you know what? I did ask for this accountability. I jumped on this doggone uh, Zoom for this accountability. Let me put right. this phone That down is again. one of the main tenets of co-working. Yep. Main tenets is you're not siloed in your head with your head down all day long, hyper-focused on one thing. You know, someone is there to say, are you doing your work? Or can I ask you a question? Or let's chit-chat for a minute because it's time for my 90-minute break. You know, so I do love that. And I also love that, you know, my brand is all about creating a synergy between my home life, my business life, and my professional life because I do have them all. I mean, y'all can see I, I'm... um. I got my travel and my to-do list. Like I'm, I'm all over the place because I mean, I shouldn't have that much on my travel and to-do list. But those are the things that I've dedicated to. This is how I'm going to get all the things that I want done. I mean, there are already three trips on my, my calendar, you know. So oh, you've already and, taken how many so far this year? I don't think. Oh, I only take one. <laughs> I only say one. One got canceled, so I've only taken one. But um, also, too, just finding the balance in that I do have a trip coming up because VA World Conference is on May 4th and it's being hosted in Philadelphia, even though it's virtual. You know, my team comes together for that. In addition to I have a baby shower in August, 
and I have a 30th Memorial birthday for my daughter in September. And then I'm going to Colorado in October for the Administrative Professionals Conference and possibly going to Miami in November for the EA Ignite Conference. So, you know, I try to make sure that I'm cognizant of everything. You know, I told my daughter, there are no trips between March and May because I'm here for you. You know, when I come back in May, it's full party mode because her baby shower is in August and then my other daughter's party is in September. And so, you know, making sure the budgets work, making sure I don't have anything business-wise that I want to do, you know. And so constantly reviewing things is a, a really big thing. And keeping a calendar is, is paramount. My calendar is everywhere. It's on my phone. It's on my watch. It's, it's everywhere um, to say, you know, you ain't got time for this. Um, even too, I have an app on my calendar that reminds me to have focus time and it will literally use an AI feature and put it in my calendar. You know, this is when you need to be focusing on something, you know, what can you focus on? So I find that those things keep me getting it all done. Absolutely. Absolutely. You just answered my next question. <laughs> what are some of the things that you do to be able to keep up with it? And you said your calendar, you got the AI on there. And the calendar is in more than one place. It ain't just in, in look, it ain't just in the business phone. Right. It's in more than one place. So if you put the business phone down, you still got it on your watch. Right. You still got it everywhere. Yeah, so. it's definitely well, everywhere. I said that with the business phone. You don't actually have a separate phone for your business. I do. I do. No, I mean a physical, like. I do. Oh, you I do? do? Yeah. Oh, okay. You, you finally made it over to the two phone world with me? Yes. Um, because I was using the, I think it's called digits line on T-Mobile and I couldn't differentiate between what was digits and what was mine. Um, so I did separate the two so that, you know, I definitely have a boundary. Um, anyone who knows me knows I don't answer my cell phone when I'm at work. So like from, from six to three, you can leave me a message or you can text me, but unless it's important, I'm at work and I have to dedicate that time to work. Um, and my clients know that as well. That's another boundary I put in place at the beginning. I work full time. I am not available until after three o'clock unless you need something that you can schedule in advance for me to agree to attend. Um, also, I learned from my client. I set my availability for meetings. I used to let the client be like, OK, I want to meet on this day. And so now it's in my contract and it's in my um welcome packet. I only have a um, client meeting on this day between these times. So you have to pick one. Right. I am not going to make myself available all the time because I do have these personal milestones coming up and I don't want to miss them. And as somebody that, that does entrepreneurship full time, I have that exact same boundary. I just approach it a little bit different. At the beginning, when we are getting into the contract, I, I asked what day works for you. Mm -hmm. And I need a set day. I don't need this to jump around to where you just calling me at any old given time. Mm -hmm. And I have a set time frame in which I'm actually working on client work versus working on building the, you know, continuing yes. to build out the back end of my business. So yeah. that's very important because that's how I was doing it at first. But I kept getting into the, oh, I need to reschedule or this and that, or I'm taking the time out of my work day to take a lunch break and handle something and it's not going well. So um, I definitely had to take a playbook out of my clients and say, you know, I'm only now available from Tuesday to Thursday for meetings between this time um, because I have to protect my time. I have to make sure that I'm giving my angel investor his eight hours because that helps me to fund everything that I do. Well, and same here. There's boundaries set on that. Uh, of if they tell me, okay, we got to reschedule. Um, I, you know, I got another obligation. You don't get to reschedule on the day that you want to. It carries over to our next scheduled meeting. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I put them in place. Sorry, y'all. My dog jumping up in my lap. Yeah. I know. Recently, me and you worked out the fact that you know I always had it in my contract that if you cancel a certain amount of meetings, I would charge you $25 for missing the certain amount. And then it would be um, the next three, it will be a, a amount and that, and then it will be cancellation because obviously you don't need me and you're not valuing my time. Um, exactly. But recently I had to literally lower those limits um, and, and literally, you know, 
follow through with the, I'm sorry, but this is a $25 extra line item because you missed this meeting. Um, so, you know, those boundaries are important, but enforcing them are as well, because I had lots of things in my, my contract that I wasn't enforcing, you know, the rush fee, you know, if you give me something right away that needs me to drop everything, that's a rush fee. And I don't have to drop everything. It's a rush fee. Plus I have to accept it. You know, so those things were always there, but I'm just now getting to the point where I'm protecting my energy, I am growing my business, and I'm acting like a business owner. Whereas yeah. at first, I was just playing a business owner. Right. Some things that... I don't feel like you were playing. I feel like you were just still a very brand new business owner. And now you were getting your footing under yourself. Yeah. Um, in my 10 years of doing this, what I have grasped the most out of it is, is that you're not going to get everything right all the time. It's not going to be perfect. That There's a lot of stuff that you don't know, especially if you've never grown a business before. Right. There's a lot of stuff that you don't know. And failure is going to be the best teacher because we can sit here and tell you all day long, do this, don't do that, you know, all of that. But what worked for us? may not work for you you got to figure out what works best for you for your family for the type of life that you want to live you know you got to assess what kind of risk you want to take right yeah the take. journey is definitely yours um i know for me with going after the government contracts a lot of people were like well why are you doing that um i know for me going to all these trips and conferences they were like why are you doing that um but I felt like those were things I needed to grow my network because I don't want to just be um, virtually connected. You know, I want to meet my people. I want to be able to refer my people. I want to have that network of, I know this and, and can you help me or can I help you? You know, in my networking, it's never, well, let's work together. It's never that. It's always, well, how are you doing? And what do you do? And what, you know, and, and going off of that, it's never a mission to, I want to give you services or I need your services. So that's, right. that's great. You let it grow organically. And, right. and that's the way it's supposed to be. You uh, you hear the saying go, and most people only think about this saying when it comes to writing email that you got to nurture your clients. Mm -hmm. Nurturing starts long before the first email is ever sent. Nurturing starts long before you exchange phone numbers. Mm -hmm. Like at the end of the day, it's a business, but you're also still human. And you got to still do the human things. Yeah. And if you connect with somebody, just, you know, y'all both got cool vibes, then vibe together. Yes, I've met so many great people, so many great people, all because I chose to take a different approach to entrepreneurship instead of just sitting behind a computer and saying, hey, do you want to work with me? You know, wow. I was hard against the being the face of my brand, but I had to grow into being the face of more than one brand. Um, you know, you remember the I can't talk on camera, and now I'm on camera all the time. You so on camera more than me. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> so definitely <laughs> growing into your own brand and making sure that everything is the way you want it. You know, not having um, formal business training, I had to figure it out, and the only way I knew to figure it out was to base it on corporate. You know, so I have the business account. I have, you know, I don't use time and all that. I have the business bank account. I have, you know, my ENO insurance, my liability, my cybersecurity. I even have an identity trust sec security on my email and systems um, because I'm an electronic notary and it's required. You know, so I have all these things that most people don't even think of. You know, I have the certifications, and I mean, I don't need them. You know, but the path that I want to go to be able to support my network. That was always forefront in my head. So yeah, yeah. You you gotta have for for the path that you've designed for yourself. And I say you design for yourself because you get to pick and choose what it is that you do. Those certifications open up doors that you wouldn't be able to even reach. Yes. Not walk through them. You wouldn't even be able to know what building them doors is is to. Yes. If you didn't have them. Yes. So, I commend you on that. I'm still in awe of the number of certifications and stuff you have. Like your signature line is probably about this long now with, with all of them letters behind it. Um, you know what? I am working on that. That was one of the things we talked about the other day, using that footer wisely, because yes, my signature line was getting crazy 
And I am about to add two new certifications because I'm going to be a disability owned um, woman enterprise as well as the um, minority women business. So you're going to have a whole little paragraph down in the foot of your email. So. No, I'm not. I'm just going to put the images. I'm just going to put no, the I'm, I'm, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. Yeah, just the images and the connect. That's it. Because like literally I went and and like I've seen this too with other people that they have their things and they're not even um properly sized they're like full size and I'm like nope don't want that and I mean I did go through and make it smaller but it's still like halfway across the page so I mean I don't want to um limit that's when myself people, when when it starts to go halfway across the page that's when most people will take some of those and I, I was messing with you about it but it's a real thing to take some of them and summarize them into a paragraph and then have some of the lo the other logos up under the bottom. No, I don't want to do that. Um, because I feel like too, I earned those. Those are mine. I'm proud of those. I want to show them all. No, it, it's still them being yours. Um, so for instance, whenever you have a new one, is is how you could actually do it. Announce your new ones in a small paragraph and say, you know, uh, Kids Virtual Services is now a proud member of so-and-so association or, you know, whatever it is or has obtained yeah. this application, those type of things. Yeah. I definitely have them on my website um, too because I do have professional certification that lead to the expertise in my business. So exactly. you know, definitely that. So like that's a whole lot of stuff. You know, um, I try not to put those logos in because I do have initials for them. So that's a great feature in that I could just use the initials. I think it's, it's all in a chain. Uh, yeah, the initials is logo. weird though because no one knows what the initials mean unless you're in my industry. So it's right. kind of a... Yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, is one certification uh, or set of certifications is... This particular certification has multiple levels to it. I'll put it that way. I'm wondering, have you taken it? If you haven't, why have you not? Why haven't you obtained this particular certification? You probably know what I'm talking about. You're talking about the Six Sigma? Yes, the Six Sigma certification. Why? Um, do you have it? Do you have it? I do not have it. I have the Certified Reliability one, which is based on the Toyota um, manufacturing lean process. So I have that one because I work in facilities and it's a lot of engineering things that I have to know about. So I have that one, um, a part oh, okay. of the yeah. organization, okay. right. Okay. A part of the organization that provides that does provide the Six Sigma one. Um, so I was thinking of it, but also too, I want to do the project management one with PMI. So I'm just trying to figure out like which one is next. Um, anything that increases my, my, expertise is always awesome but nothing's free so i have to build it into the budget um what else does it require as in systems security all those things because right now i'm going through the security process for the department of justice i mean department of defense so i mean you know i have to have certain things my ident trust certificate um requires a, a rf um pk um key fob, you know, so all the things. So everything is on a list. As you see my to-do list, you can't see my finance list, but everything is on a list and I just allocate, you know, this is how I'm going to do this, this is how I'm going to do that. Gotcha. Right. Um, yeah, and my my virtual service business kiss has been profitable for the last three years. So thank you for that. Um, and VA World, while not profitable, I am um, bootstrapping it. And we have gotten several grants over the three years that we've been in business. So, I mean, you know, I'm bootstrapping it for now, but it'll it'll make its way pretty soon. And, you know, it's on a freemium model, so we only want to cover overhead. So, you know, we'll, get, know. All the things. we'll get all the so, things. I was going to give you a little bit of advice because the path that we were just talking about is actually the path that I'm on right now. I started out, um, I was looking at the PM, uh, PMI certification, mm -hmm. the PMP certification yeah. through PMI. I always mix them up. But anyway, I was looking at it and I looked at some of the requirements mm -hmm. and you yeah, got to have- I don't meet those, but I'm going to get yeah. around it. So that's what I was going to say. Actually getting your uh, Six Sigma certifications and getting and doing maybe like, say like the Google uh, PMP certif uh, project management certification, 
actually they are now accepting those in the hours okay. for you to qualify to take to sit for the PMP. Mm -hmm. So I definitely uh recommend that you go ahead and go through the Six Sigma program, whether mm -hmm. you do it through your job or whether you find another company oh. to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> you so still, but. I, I really highly recommend that you do it. And anybody else, honestly, for anybody that's working in our industry, mm -hmm. whether you call yourself a virtual assistant or you're, you know, an OBM, online business manager, or whatever the case it may be, whatever your title is, if you're dealing in the back end of people businesses, especially if you're going a route to where you're sitting down with them and you're developing the plans for it, that is a certification, uh, having those belts white white yellow green and black yeah it's something that will help you really thrive and prepare yeah. like yeah taking my business to a whole nother level yeah. i'm able to see more of what people have going on i can pick up uh on those things that those subtle inefficiencies a whole lot faster because i understand all of that now from going through and getting those certifications yeah. i definitely That's use mine so definitely fast. use mine um you know, in work, I am able to see those efficiencies. I am able to stand up and say, this is not going to work. You know, a lot of people aren't versed in it in my department. So I can say, no, that didn't work. And they don't listen because the you know, I'm that. the lowly admin. But later on, they come back and be like, it ain't going to work. We're like, mm. You know, but even in my business, I'm able to see those things. You know, and when I went on my, my trip to the box, um, that was one of the first things they taught us was the lean method um, of running your your business or startup. So, I mean, you know, fail forward, you know, uh, do it scared, you know, all those things. So, yes, it definitely helps me see a lot of things. Um, and again, leads to my unconventional career <laughs> entrepreneurship journey. It's like, who goes on a reality show and you're a business owner? Like, for real. But best experience ever, met the best people, um, so many connections, so much fun. I'm definitely loving it. Came that was a nice little Fire twist, up. too. <laughs> that was a, that's a nice little twist to actually putting on a conference to teach the stuff that they taught y'all. Like, I got the opportunity to talk with you while you were there. Um, it wasn't during filming and stuff like that, but, yeah. you know, it was during your downtime. But to hear all of the stuff that you talked about, like what you went through, the notes and stuff that you shared, mm -hmm. because being a part of your community, we got to see a little bit more than other people did. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got to see a little bit more. And me being in a position that I'm in, a part of your advisory board, and the fact that we do have a friendship that we built, I got to see even more than some folks, that right. even more than the group got to see. <laughs> the kid had a whole meltdown. Yeah, so it it was pretty cool being on this. Not on camera though. That experience. Right. Yeah. You didn't break down on camera. Not on camera though. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I I I invite you to watch it when it comes out to see the face. <laughs> I'm gonna be able to tell exactly what that's, you want. That's what I'm saying. I've been Just doing you long enough. See the face. Um, but no, another question I was gonna ask you. Gotcha. Another question I was going to ask you a few minutes ago is, of all of the people that you've worked with over the years uh, in your business, how many of them have you actually got to meet in person? Mm, worked with um, three. Regina, oh, and, three me, and my client. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mm -hmm. met Regina. Regina was my first coach. She is my friend. She's been a client. Um, I've met Ebony, who is Regina's cousin, and I went to support Regina at her event, and Ebony was there, and Ebony's now a client, and then my client that was in Charlottesville, I used to go once a month, so yeah. Yeah, you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I like well, when I can do that, because then I get to see their personality in real life, I get to mm -hmm. see their space, um, and the energy that they bring when they're talking about their business with someone else in person, um, so I like that, and um, you know, I love being invited to that because, I mean, you know, as a virtual person, they don't have to invite you or as virtual, some people don't even want to go. Yeah. So I, I like the that. flexibility. Yeah. I can say that I'm honestly blessed. I can only think of two people that I've worked with that I didn't get to meet in person. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. Yes, you did uh, fly to my birthday party. 
Yes, I flew to your birthday party. Uh, although you're not a client, <laughs> but uh I've been a worker bee though. <laughs> but out of all of the clients I've had, I've gotten the opportunity to actually meet them. Like when I was living in Arkansas, I was driving down here to Houston to meet up with uh meet up with my coach mm -hmm. and also got to meet all of the people in the community that later became clients. Yeah. So it was really, really cool. Yeah. I got to the opportunity to travel up to New York. So being doing what we do mm -hmm. can make life so much more fun. Like I would have never left Arkansas, or, you know, had I not started my entrepreneurial journey, I wouldn't have been all over the country like I have now. I done been from one coast to the other now. <laughs> that ain't me because I love to travel. Um, but you know, being a parent at 19, being a single parent until 39, you know, it just wasn't feasible. And so, you know, I'm going from that impact, I mean, that income phase to the impact phase, and I am loving every little bit of it. <laughs> and I am refusing to give it up, even though I'm about to be a grandmother, I've already put my stick in the grass. <laughs> I was going to say, hey, that grandbaby, they're going to have some wings because the grandbaby going to be going with you. Maybe, but I already put my stick in the grass. Mm -mm, I am not that grandma. I am not that grandma at all. I understand. I understand. You think that with me, you know, not having any children, that I'd be done travel more than I have. But I was like you. I was that worker be working a job before I started entrepreneurship. I had my head down and I was going to work every day. And that's all that I did. I go to work, go home, go to work, go home. But I never did that. <laughs> I mean, you know, oh, there's track practice and soccer and basketball and me, oh, oh, I and, did all of that. You know, I all those all things in addition to I volunteer heavily. You know, I was a debate co I was a debate judge for the local high school. So, you know, mm -hmm. always doing something because I like to stay busy, you know, as a mental health warrior and advocate. I can't sit still. It's just oh, no. now, don't get me wrong, I wasn't sitting still, but I just wasn't traveling. I wasn't doing a whole lot of traveling along with it. But... Former Army brat loved to travel. <laughs> I've actually grown to love it now. Like I used to hate to drive. Um, even before all of the car accidents and I got P uh, PTSD from it. I still didn't like to drive. I like to go places, but I didn't like to drive. I'm actually starting to love, love a road trip. Love it, love it, love it. I did learn my lesson though. Um, I had to drive from Philly to New York and then Virginia. So I've learned my lesson that I cannot drive more than six hours without being increasingly unhappy. <laughs> that is it. That unhappy. Is Look, or me, not enough. My limit is six hours. Yeah, and I I, I feel bad about it because one of my friends, Miss Janet, she lives in Atlanta and Atlanta's eight hours away. And I hate Atlanta's airport. So it's like, ah, I want to go visit Miss Janet, but I got to go to the airport. Oh um, no! See the, the way we work that out is, I drive four hours, get to a destination that's halfway in between, give me a hotel room, and I'm there for the night. Mm -hmm. And then I get up the next morning, and drive the other four. That is a feasible solution. I don't think on that. I don't think on that. But yeah, um, and look, I've had to come up with that. I've had to come up with that thinking about going back home now. Mm -hmm. Being up in the DFW area, I was only about five to six hours away from home. So that was within my my low range. I could drive there and I could go home and go by myself. I'm eight hours away being down here in Houston. I'm like, no, nah, baby, baby, I don't think I'll be able to do that. I ain't gonna be able to pull that one no. Definitely. So yeah, I, I know. Um, with my cousin and then go on up to yeah, see my mom. If it's in the DMV area, you can already already count me in. DMV area, I'm there. Um South Carolina, North Carolina. I mean, South Carolina is a little on my limit, but North Carolina, I'm there. Um, beach weather, I am probably at the beach most weekends. So yeah, definitely love a road trip. You know, yeah, as a mom, to you, you got to have a road trip. <laughs> I think I want to move closer to one of the beaches. Yes, going to the beach is like 